so incredibly glad you joined us here today at Church on the Rock. If this is your first time, let me encourage you to go to JesusOfTheRock.org. Then you can check out our latest blog post, you can look at our latest podcast, or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now, as you go through this message, I pray that God works life change into your life, and welcome to Church on the Rock. Amen. Woo. Good to be here. My wife made it here. She's been out there speaking at the Stevens Center for me, and uh, uh, she's, she's a lot better speaker than I am, so, uh, so we, I have no problem sending her off and speaking and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, man, what a great team we make. So uh, look at this. I got $10 million, waterfront property with a mansion on it, and I got a parachute. Before you choose one of these three things, let me give you the rest of the scenario, because in the next five minutes, you're going to be jumping from an airplane at 10,000 feet, you know? Uh, all of a sudden, guess what? The $10 million uh, just lost its value. The waterfront property with a mansion on it just lost its value. But guess what? The old dusty parachute over here looking mighty good at this point, you know? And, uh, and, and what we don't realize that any time, it's a point in time to be born, point in time to die, that you're going to be leaping off into eternity, you know? And the Bible says, uh, you know, that uh, and the dust shall return to the ground from which it came, the spirit shall return to God who gave it. You know, uh, this old body is going to die. It's going to go back to the ground. And guess what? Your spirit and soul is going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Either you're going to be on one side or the other because there's only two destinations. Either you're going to be with, uh, as a child of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're going to be separated from God in judgment. You're coming to judgment and you're going to be cast out, uh, a place that God did not design for you to go. That was not his purpose. And, and be tormented uh, for eternal hell because guess what? A lot of people think we're... Uh, human beings having a temporary spiritual experience, but uh, no, uh, but in reality, we're spiritual beings having a temporary human experience. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, because guess what? The, the, the body's going to die. It's going back to the ground, and, and, and we're going to last forever. You know what I'm saying? And, that's, and I was thinking about this. I remember what Job said. You know, he, uh, he wished he had never been born when he was going through so much torment and stuff. And, and, and you might have a successful life here in this world, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You might have, in, in the world's term, you might be the most successful person in the world, but if you die and, and you're, you're judged, the judgment comes upon you, whosoever's not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire, and you're spending eternity in hell, guess what? I, what's going to go through your mind is, I wish I had never been born. You know, wow. just, like, just like Job said. I was thinking about that the other day. I said, wow, you know, that's... You know, in successful in the world's term, but eternity, a billion years from now, there will not be one second taken off the clock of eternity. And, and it's not, it's not some, and no end's going to come to your e eternal torment. But on the flip side of that, man, hey, I, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I hope you've experienced being in the presence of God. That's what, I'm going to hit that point here in a minute because there is nothing greater, nothing greater than just getting a taste of, of the presence of God, walking in the presence of God. And uh, all we're doing is getting a little taste of heaven here on earth. And I'm going to get to that in a minute, man. But I'm telling you, if you're not getting in the presence of God, I'm telling you, uh, I'll get to that in a minute to show you how to get there. And I'm telling you, when you get there, you're not going to want to leave, you know. And, uh, woo, I mean, uh, and they overcame about the blood of the Lamb by the word of their testimony. The most powerful thing you're going to have is your testimony in Christ. Most people are not going to read their Bible. Uh, you, know, you can preach to them all you want. And I tell people all the time, they're over there trying to preach to these homeless people and different stuff. I say, brother... I said, uh, I said, first of all, you, you, you're unbiblical, you know, because uh, if a man's got a need, he, he's not listening to what you're saying. You know, man's over there hungry. Guess what? He's not listening to the gospel. He wants something to eat. So you, <laughs> you go over there and you feed that man. You give him a couple of dollars. Oh, I'm not going to buy alcohol. I don't care what you buy with it. I'm giving you that money. And that's on you now, bro. And when they receive it, guess what? They're ready to receive what you got to say. You know, and that's... Uh, a lot of people miss that, you know, and uh, I don't know how I got off on that, but anyway, I was uh, just thinking about that on the homeless ministry. I do a lot of homeless ministry and stuff, and, and I uh, meet that need. They're not, they're not ready to sit down and listen to what you got to say, you yeah. know. Meet that need, their hunger, whatever they've got an issue going on. Meet that need, and guess what? Hey, what you got to say now? I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive what you got, you know, but you got to meet the physical need. That's biblical. Uh, anyway, the, the testimony, uh, it takes a lifetime to build a testimony. It only takes a few minutes to lose it, you know, so... Uh, you know, you got to walk the walk, you know, because people are watching your walk, they're watching and seeing how you're living, and then, hey, is this for real? Is this is what he got for real or who he's got for real? 
and, and they see this consistent walk, this walk where you're walking in joy, the joy of the Lord. I'm telling you, people won't. Uh, you don't have to go preach no major sermon. They're, they want what you got. Hey, I, I don't know. I don't know what you got, but I want it. It's not what I got. It's who I got. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, anyway, man, share a little bit of my past. A uh, young child taken up, raised up in church, told about this Jesus that loved me. At a young age being sexually molested by the sick man. Instead of turning to my parents, I turned to the Jesus they told me back. I had childlike faith as a child. And uh, God spoke to me. And... Two of the things I remember he said is, hey, I'll protect you, and one day you're going to preach my word. You know? And you know, 37 years old, I fulfilled the preaching thing, and, and through the 20-something years of drug addiction, man, a lot of people died along my side, and a lot of people went to prison, and God supernaturally pulled me out of these situations over a dozen drug overdoses. Uh, drug overdoses where I should have died, how God supernaturally pulled me out of these situations. So I'm just telling you, God is faithful. You know, God is faithful, even when we are not. You know? And most of the time, we are not. Uh, and... Uh, Anyway, but man was designed, the way God designed us in the Garden of Eden was to be clothed in his glory, uh, to walk in his presence because of sin, you know. Uh, you know, we're separated from God and, and, and instead of worshiping God, putting him on the throne of our life, being clothed in his glory, uh, we're chasing after, we got a dry, thirsty soul. We're looking to worship, you know, and addiction, all addiction is is a worship disorder. You know, uh, addiction is a worship disorder. Trying to find something, trying to put someone or something in the place where God is supposed to be, the way God designed it. And, and we begin chasing these things in the world. And as a young child, even though God has spoke to me at a young age, I had a dry, thirsty soul looking for something in, in, in the world. That, like it's, it's, it, and it had just what I needed to quench this dry, thirsty soul. You know, I tell people I began chasing the dark clouds of the world, which had no rain. You know. I was chasing after those clouds, and, and guess what? Every time I, I, I got them and thought they was going to sit, this, I found it. I have finally found the promised land. I have found what I've been looking for, and guess what? It was a big disappointment, you know? Twelve years old, smoking weed at church camp, uh, drinking alcohol, just rebellious and uh, good in sports and different things, and just, uh, you know, things be fun, exciting to start off with, but guess what? Then they become boring, and then you move up to another thing. People say, I just smoke weed. That's all I'm ever going to do. Uh, I said, man, if you smoke weed, you'll do cocaine. It's a better high. You know, just like you'll steal a dime, you'll steal a quarter because it's, it's more money. You know, it's better money. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, and it just progressed, you know. My life progressed, trying these different things, trying to satisfy uh, this dry, thirsty soul I had within me. I remember our senior year, uh, we're drunk, having what we thought was a good time. Uh, it had been raining all day, high rate of speed. Hit a thing of water, hydroplane. Hit a ditch, hit a culvert, uh, flew 50 feet in the air, cut a telephone pole 10 feet in the air. Took over an hour and a half, cut me and my best friend out. Would pronounce him dead on the ride with the hospital. I was good in sports, uh, senior class favorite. In an instant, my life was changed, you know. They had to reconstruct my ankle, uh, got bars in my right femur, my right leg shoulder and my left, uh, you know, broke up my, both of my legs and stuff. Would graduate from Moss Point High School in a wheelchair. I've been in five states with four thousands of students in the schools and different things, talking about the consequences of drugs, and of, of course also sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's my whole goal and our number one goal. But what I tell the students, I said, you can choose to jump out of a ten-story window, but you can't choose your consequences when you hit the ground. And uh, you know, every day is about choices. Life's choices, man. This is, life's not easy, and Jesus never lied to us. He told you up front, hey, life's not easy. There's persecution, there's tribulation, there's all these different things. He just laid it out there, and of course. Some of the preachers get up there and they don't, they didn't hear what Jesus said. They said, it's going to be good. Just come to Jesus. Everything's going to be wonderful, glorious. And uh, hey, that, ain't, that ain't what I'm reading. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, they, it's, uh, they, they cheapen the gospel a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? Because that's not really what Jesus said. Hey, Jesus said, hey, life's tough. I'm not here to pull you out of the situation. I'm here to go with you through. You know, life's, you know, life's tough and, and life is tough, you know. And, and, and that's why we need God to go with us through these, uh, these different situations. The, uh, I would go off to college, got like about $100,000 out of uh, two car wrecks, you know, when trying to get no education, I just kept trying to get away from my parents, you know, and, uh, and <laughs> got up there and I was a man of wild man with that kind of money, that young, you know, and was uh, just trying everything, every kind of drug, got addicted to gambling, man, got into gambling real big, just had an addictive personality, trying all these different things, got introduced to cocaine, fell in love with it, greatest thing ever, you know. Uh, you know, to start off with, that is, it was the greatest thing ever. You know, I had found my new God, you know, and uh, I had it on the throne of my life. That's all I talked about. That's where all my money went. I was making my offerings all right to the, uh, to the God of cocaine. Uh, 
But you know, for long, man, I couldn't even hardly get out of bed. And it didn't matter how much I did, it just, it just wasn't doing what I wanted to do. Uh, the, watch this. God, in his perfect creation, created all pleasure. God created all pleasure. Did y'all know that? God created all pleasure. Everything God made perfect, Satan comes around and perverts, corrupts, and counterfeits. Woo! Yeah. Uh, just like God made, you know, a lot of people don't understand this, God made the uh, marriage between a husband and a wife. The intimacy between the husband and wife are to be enjoyed, and they grow in that bond. It's not falling in love, it's growing in love. Through the years, they grow in that bond. That bond becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. That's the way God designed it. You over here, and you bond with this one, you bond with that one, you bond with that one. Guess what? That's not the way God designed it. All oh, messed up. They messed up, you messed up, because I've done it. You know, I was out there living promiscuous all out there, man. I so messed up. I'm wondering why they all messed up. You know, we all messed up, you know. And, <laughs> homosexuality, definitely not the way God designed it, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, it was the way God designed it, you know, not because he hates us or anything like that. It's just the way God made it. God knows all things. He's created it uh, to work in perfect order, and God, he makes it right. You know, it's to be done his way. That's why he gave us, the, you know, directions to kind of show us, hey, if you weren't really sure how it was done, he, he wrote us a book, you know, to, to show us this is, this, is the way it's, this is the way it's supposed to be, this is the way we're to do it, you know. And when you do it my way, I'm telling you, you'll realize it's the right way, you know. Uh, and, it, and it is, man. It's the right way. I've been following his book, and guess what? My life is a lot better. I still got issues and problems and different things like that, but I, I, I tell you what, my life's 100% better than what it was before, following God's guidelines under his direction, under his guidance. Watch this. Uh, God created us. You know, the body is just, uh, just a masterpiece, you know, the body itself, you know, not including all the other creation. Uh, but we've got a chemical, a biochemical in our body called dopamine. That's where you get the word dope from. Uh, you run between 70 and 350 micrograms in your body. You're having a real good day. You're up here around 300, 350. You know, your kid got an F, you lost your job, you're down here around 70 today, you know, and uh, having a real bad day, you know. You eat your favorite food. Now, y'all gonna go eat after this service, I'm sure, and you get you a big piece of chocolate cake. Your body releases about 150 micrograms of dopamine. Uh, and, and what it does, it gives you pleasure in eating, you know. That's why you enjoy eating. Some of us overeat like me. Uh, <laughs> Initial smoking cigarettes about 225. But you know what? On your initial getting high with methamphetamines, I'm using that as an example, crack cocaine's right up there high, and all the different drugs have different levels. Your initial high is around 1,050. That's higher. That's, that's your initial high. That's higher in intimacy between husband and wife. Yeah. Man, you're in an ecstasy. It's the greatest thing ever, man. You, hey, whoo, you just found your new God. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everything else is out of the way. This is, this is first in my life now. But you know what? When you come off that initial high, you know your normal level, your normal bottomed out level, 70, you go below it. You're in a state of depression. I've seen people commit suicide at this point. Uh, all you want to do is get back up. So you do get high, but you're not back where you wanted to be or where you started at. And you keep doing more and more and more. That's where a lot of people overdose. They're, they keep doing more trying to reach that initial high. But guess what? You'll never reach that initial high again. I don't understand what the, why not, but you never do. Your high gets lower, your low gets lower, guess what you are? You're entrapped in the bondage of addiction, you know? And, uh, you know, Satan is a counterfeiter, you know what I'm saying? He, uh, he, he comes in and counterfeits what God makes perfect and, 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 and traps you. And, of course, Satan comes steal, kill, and destroy. And I'm telling you, I see it over and over and over and over uh, that the Bible is true. You know, he is a, he is a destroyer. The, uh, anyway... Uh, I would go back home broke, you know, you normally want to get your act together when you're broke or in jail, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> why didn't I do it when I had $100,000? I don't know. Uh, but you know, when you get broke or you're in jail, that's when you decide you're going to get your act together. Uh, went back, started dating this real pretty girl, going to be a normal person, uh, got her pregnant, mom and them tried to help me out, got me, you know, help me get a trailer, all these different things, man, and you know, I'm a full-blown addict, you know? Yeah, got a little job, taking my paycheck, going to buy drugs and alcohol with a little paycheck I got, not, you know, not taking care of my family, not taking my kids. Because I started doing drugs and alcohol, I started dealing with life at 12 years old, you know, with drugs and alcohol. Now I'm 23 years old, and guess what? I'm still a 12-year-old mature, you know, mature levels down here. Maturity level still a child, you know, because I never actually grew because I was dealing with life like that. And that's what you see. People who do come to Christ at an older age, guess what? Whatever age they started dealing with the drugs, dealing with life and the drugs, I think their maturity level is way down here, you know? And, uh, and it's, it's crazy uh, that they've got to, you know, be developed. They've got to, you know, they've got to learn these new skills, life skills, different things like that. But anyway, it was just a, it was just a mess. Uh, my family wouldn't take care of it. It led to divorce. I would go back out and 
wide open for you know another 10 or 15 years doing the drugs, selling the drugs, uh, just feeding a habit. Uh, one of my friends in this time period, a uh, good friend of mine, and we party, we, we get drunk, we fought, we did the different things. Uh, he was built like a bulldog and uh, you know, nicest guy you ever met, give the shirt off his back when he was sober. But you know, when he got drunk, he wanted to fight. You ever seen somebody like that? Fight off, the, you know, fight at the drop of the hat, you know, and help you drop your hat. Uh, he was mean, mean guy, man, when he got drunk. And when he got in his last fight, they separated him. Boy pulled out a pistol, shot him in the chest, dropped him dead. The Bible says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever's led astray thereby is not wise. Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is lost, be filled with the Spirit. Uh, you know, God's given us the specific talents, gifts, and abilities. He's instilled each, in each one of us. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil give you a future and a hope. Uh, we take that. I mean, it's, I know that was for the Babylonian captivity, but, you know, we can take that as our own. God does have a hope, a future. He's given us specific talents, gifts, and abilities. Uh, but we chase after the, the spirits of the world, the things of the world, and and, and try and find our satisfaction in them instead of allowing God to have full control. And what he's telling you in Ephesians 5, 18, and be not drunk with wine, wherein it's lost, catch that loss, but be filled with the Spirit. When you get drunk on alcohol, you start drinking the alcohol, you surrender your control. You surrender your control, and you allow the spirit of alcohol to come in and influence you. That's why it's called a DUI, driving under the influence. You're under the influence of that spirit. You say, how can it be a spirit? What's the liquor store say? Wine, liquor, uh, wine, liquor, spirit. You know. Uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. As you begin to drink alcohol, as you begin to uh, take pain pills, as you begin to uh, smoke the crack cocaine, guess what? You're opening up your, open up the gates of your mind, allowing those spirits to come in and take control. You're surrendering your control and allowing them to come in and take control. But what God tells us in Ephesians 5.18, be, don't be under the it control, but be under my control. Be filled with the Spirit. In other words, when you come to Jesus Christ by faith, trust Him, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have a new nature, a new spirit within you, and what God's telling you to do, hey, just like on the alcohol, you surrender your control, you die to self, you allow God to come in through the Holy Spirit to have full control of you. And I'm telling you, give him full control, and uh, that's what it means to be filled with the Spirit. Just like drinking the alcohol, you got to keep drinking the alcohol to stay drunk, or to stay filled with the Spirit. It's, it's not a one-time feeling, it's a continuous feeling. Be being filled, be being filled. you got to continue drinking, you understand that? It's not a three-month program, it's not a three-year prog uh, three program, it's a lifetime of serving Jesus. When you come to Christ, it's not a program, it's not a, a limit, it's, a, it's for eternity, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and if, if you look in the Bible, it's another thing. Hey, Jesus said, count the cost. Before you come to me, you better count the cost. Yeah. yeah. When you follow Jesus, you better look where Jesus went. Jesus went to the cross. Yeah. He says, any man, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Yeah. Uh, over and over and over, right? He said, unless you hate your mother, your brother, your sister. You know, like everybody's going, what in the world is he telling us to do? Hate our mothers, our brothers, our sisters. Because when you come to Jesus Christ, he's God eternal. He's the one that created all things. He's just not only creator, but he's sustainer. Your love for Jesus Christ, he should be preeminent. He should be, for, be before all things. And your love for him should be so great. The separation between even yourself and your family and stuff would, would seem like hate. The separation would be so great. But you know what? When I come to Jesus Christ... When I uh, strung out on the drugs, I, I dropped my kid off at different places, uh, go to the family thing. I didn't, you know, I didn't care about my family. I didn't care about my kid. I didn't care about myself. Uh, and, and you know what? When I come to Christ, guess what? I put Jesus up here where he's supposed to be. Guess what? It didn't, it didn't put my family down. It, it exalted them. You know what I'm saying? Now I love my wife. I love my children. I even love myself now. Yeah? And, uh, that, and that's the way God designed it. Yeah. That's when I, when I do marriage counseling and stuff, I said, Christ has got to be on the throne of your life. It's like a triangle. Uh, and you don't go towards each other, trying to get to each other, because you'll kill each other, you get up to each other. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> you go towards Jesus. The husband and wife are to, are to seek Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As you seek Jesus, guess what? It brings you and her closer together. You know, that's the way God designed it. You know, putting Christ first in all things. Uh, 
Anyway, I would go off with the Mexican Mafia, did some really sick stuff, and uh, you know, just anybody that's been in the drug world has done some sick stuff, you know, so I'm not trying to out, you know, play anybody's craziness. I, I'm embarrassed to even talk about some of the stuff I did. I, that's why I tell people sometimes, I said, I said, brother, there's some things I did. I didn't put no stinking book, I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> hey, it was some, I did some stupid stuff, you know, some embarrassing stuff. I mean, I'm ashamed to you know, even talk about, you know. Uh, and, and, and anybody that's been out in the, in, in the world living for Satan, guess what they have too, you know what I'm saying? They act like they're all cool, everything's all cool out there. They did some sick, nasty stuff out there that they don't want nobody to know about. That's a, but guess what? God knows. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, hey, God also forgives through Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm forgiven. You know? uh, anyway, I come back. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a nervous wreck. This is 20-something years of drug addiction. I'm just flying through, you know. And I uh, told so Mama needed help. Sent me to Singing River Hospital. Put me on a psych ward. Put me through a 10-day little secular program they had there. And at the end of the program, they said, well, you're addicted to alcohol, drugs, gambling. They know this big list. Well, I said, well, I knew that, you know. <laughs> I already knew that. They said, uh, I said, what you didn't know is it's a disease. You got, it's a disease, and, and you're always going to have this, you know. Uh, you'll never be cured. And we, hey, man, I wasn't a whole lot of hope. I didn't have a whole lot of hope after they got through telling me that what I had was a disease. You know, uh, what's the problem about calling it a disease, man? You make a person a victim, you know. You know, make a person a victim, you know. Kind of like it's cancer. You got cancer. Well, man, you know, uh, it, you know, goodness gracious. I seen people, man, that was in there. Uh, uh, I gotta go down there and get him a fifth of whiskey. Grandma's gotta go down there and get him a fifth of whiskey because he he, 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 he's gonna get sick, you know, and all this, you know, because it's a disease. And, and, and they're enabling, you know, he's a victim, you know, poor baby's got this alcoholic disease, and, uh, you know, and they're enabling him, you know. And anyway, but, you know, in reality, it's just sin, you know what I'm saying? Sin, a self selective slavery, you know. Addiction is a self-selective slavery. Guess what? It ain't like cancer. You, you can't choose cancer, but guess what? You choose your drug, your alcohol. You, you choose. You make a choice, you know, of, of your addiction. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, a self-selective slavery, you know, of sin, you know. Uh, anyway, the... Uh, They sent me, sent me home. Told me I'd have this disease for the rest of my life. Told me to go to Alcoholics Anonymous, and Alcoholics Anonymous. I did. I said, well, I got a lot more problems than alcohol, so I went to Narcotics Anonymous, and I'm Rodney, I'm an addict, once an addict, always an addict, and, uh, you know, smoke a pack of cigarettes, drink a pot of coffee, and tell war stories, you know, and get my chips for being clean, man. A uh, bunch of sick people, folks in there just like me, man, we was in the, just in the bondage of fear, and just, 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 man, we was a miserable bunch down there, you know, and, uh, and, and I always tell people, you know, and I, it probably kept me alive, you know, I'm not, I'm not knocking them, they got me sober. Helped keep me sober, you know, but, uh, but, you know, I was miserable, you know. I got back to sober. I got back to my main issues. This is why I started drinking and doing drugs in the forest place. I'm back where I was at, you know. Uh, <laughs> back to all my issues, you know. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I tell people, Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous can help you get you sober, but Jesus Christ can set you free, you know. The, uh, let me show you the second thing. I'm not knocking them. This is, second, this is we're just world system. Uh, you got a disease, you go to recovery, but the third phase of it's on the, on the, on the chart, three-way chart, you got relapse, you know? And they're right, the right storm of life is gonna come and your foundation's on the sand. Jesus tells the two stories on Matthew 7, 24 about one house, one life built upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, one built upon the sand, uh, the house or the life is what he's talking about. And the storms of life come to both houses, the one built upon the sand, it collapses, relapse, and the one built upon the rock, it, it goes through the storm also, but it withstands the storm. Uh, anyway, you got, uh, you got a disease, go to recovery, and of course, the third phase is relapse. Praise God, I'd later on find out that's not true. Uh, God tells us in his word that it's, it, you know, addiction is a sin, you know? Uh, sin of idolatry. Uh, and, hey, that's a good thing because guess what? Jesus died for all sin, you know? And putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, uh, sin, salvation, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then transformation, sanctification with God transforms you, changes you, uh, breaks down those strongholds in your life, and, and delivers you from the bondage. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's another thing. Your identity, I'm Rodney, I'm an alcoholic. I'm Rodney, I'm an addict. 
You know, you got a kid over here, you call them stupid, you call them dumb, you call them ignorant, guess what? That might be a genius, but you know what? They're going to walk away thinking they're stupid, they're dumb, they're ignorant, because that's who their identity is. You know, you've, you've, you've established their identity. But when you come to Christ, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. God declares us to be a child of God. He declares us to be righteous. Uh, the... Uh, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. What God declares you to be, he declares you at the moment by faith, by, by repentance. The Holy Spirit shows you stand in your life through repentance. Repentance is a change of mind, change of heart, which leads to a change of direction. Repentance and faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Faith and repentance go hand in hand when you come to faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, salvation takes place. Uh, Justification is the, the proper word for it. Justification, God declares you to be righteous. He declares you to be a child of God. Uh, Romans 8, 16 says, we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ, you know. And, and you know what? Nobody around you might see it. Uh, you know, you might not even truly fully understand it. Nobody, your family might not understand it. Nobody might not see it. But if God declares you righteous, he declares you to be saint, a saint, a holy one, guess what? That's who you are. And what God begins in you, guess what? He's going to complete it. The process of sanctification is God. God's already declared you. That's your position now. He's making you, through this lifetime, he's making you what he's already declared you to be. You understand that? That's right. And, of course, glorification will come one day. And, uh, beloved, now we're the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Guess what? If you're a born-again child of God, you might not look like it. God's declared you to be righteous. One day, you're going to look just like Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's good stuff, man. Uh, so our identity, that's, that's just it. Start, it will revolutionize your life. It's not just talking about drug acts. I'm about talking about Christians yourself. Uh, I'm still a liar. I'm still this. I'm still that. I'm still a terrible husband or wife. And all the different things we, 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 we label ourselves with. But when you come to Christ, God declares you to be righteous. He declares you to be a holy one. And you need to start walking at what God's already de declared you to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just like Prince Charles. He's royalty. But he can still go climb up in a, in a, in a dumpster and, and eat a Happy Meal, you know? Uh, he's still royalty. He just don't please the Father because he's not walking in what he's, he's, what he's supposed to be. Us as Christians, guess what? We're to walk. God's declared that we begin to start walking in what God's already declared us to be. You understand that? That's who we are. And like I said, nobody might believe it. They might not see it. Back 13 and a half years ago, nobody could see or what I would say. Hey, I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of God. And guess what? All right, now, now people are starting to realize, hey, man, uh, this man has had some major transformation, you know. I always tell people I'm not where I want to be, but I ain't where I used to be. God has brought me a long way in the last 13 and a half years. But realize that getting your identity right, who you now are in Christ Jesus. When you get buried in that water, it's just identifying with the death. You die to the old person, come up that new life in Christ Jesus. You're identifying through baptism, water baptism, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. To walk in that new life uh, in Christ Jesus. Begin to walk in that new identity. Hey, my, you're not a drunk no more. I'm not an alcoholic. That's why I don't go to AA and NA meetings no more because I ain't no alcoholic. I'm not an addict. No, I'm, a, I'm a creation of Christ. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. Uh, I'm royalty. Yeah. I'm going to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ throughout eternity, man. And, uh, whew, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm down here. You know, he is the authority. God, God he's, done, he's done defeated Satan. He defeated Satan on the cross. Jesus Christ defeated Satan on the cross when he was buried on the cross, resurrected. He defeated uh, Satan. And now it's us as his children. Guess what? We're here to enforce that authority. You understand that? We're not to walk defeated, beat down, broken down. We're to walk in the empowerment and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We're to start walking in victory. We're supposed to be walking through the gates of hell, breaking down people, reaching in there, jerking them out of crack houses and bringing them to the Lord Jesus Christ and setting people free. My God, man, that's what our job is. Not sitting up in a church and, and, and acting like doing go through our rituals. Man, we're supposed to be taking the power of God out into the streets bringing people to freedom because we are under the authority of Jesus Christ who's done more in the victory over Satan. And man, we have got the victory. We're walking in the victory under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, what have we got going on here? We are just full of the Lord, man. And we just got to walk in that power, man, and just get excited, you know? Start walking in that excitement, man. Just don't come up here and praise and worship. Take that praise and worship out in the streets and reach the laws for Christ, man. That's what our job's here for. That's what we're here for, man. Again, we're so incredibly glad you joined us here today at Church on the Rock. 
Now, if this message encouraged you in any way, let me encourage you to go to JesusTheRock.org and let us know about it. Those type of messages encourage us as we work throughout the week. While you're there, check out our latest podcast or give to our ministries financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Again, thank you for joining us today and have a blessed week.